Hello and welcome to another video. This video will just try to explain to you what the mean value theorem is and how to answer the questions surrounding the mean val value theorem. Usually, all we're looking for is a point on a function that has the same slope as the slope you would get if you treated this function as a straight line. I'm going to say that again. The mean value theorem is saying, look for that point on this function that has the same slope as the slope you would get if you treated this function as a straight line between the points negative 2 and 2. Let me show you on a graph so you get the picture that I'm trying to paint. So say you have this graph like this and you decide to do something like this, okay? And let's say you, let's extend this. So this is from, let's put it this way. Let's, let's say this is negative two, okay? This is point negative two, and this is the point, let's call this point two, okay? You trace it down here, you get this. Trace it up here, you get this. Now, what we're saying is that we know this is a curve, but let's assume we treat it like a straight line. You know when you draw a straight line graph? Okay, so from this point to this point is gonna be a straight line. Let me try and make this line as straight as possible. Okay, look at that. You see this line is called a secant line. Okay, it's called a secant line, and because it's connecting two points on a curve, what we're saying is, this secant line has a slope. The slope of the secant line, you can't say is the slope of the function. No, because this function is a curve and has many different slopes depending on the point that you're talking about. But there's something about the mean value theorem. It says that this slope that you're gonna calculate by just drawing a straight line between these two points, these two points are what we call the interval, okay? and they are usually A to B. The mean value theorem says, if you calculate the slope, treating this just like a straight line, you know how you find the slope y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, the answer you get is gonna be equal to the slope of one of the tangents that you're gonna get between this point and this point. You know, there's so many tangents. Just imagine this. I could have a tangent at this point. That's one tangent, it has a slope. Obviously, the slope of this tangent is not the slope of this tangent because if it's the same, they'll be almost parallel. So I could, uh, they'll be parallel rather. So I could start looking at points on this curve where I know that they will have the same slope. I think this is a suspect point. Yeah, something like that. This point is a suspect point. Right now, I can say approximately that the slope of this tangent at this point is the same as the slope of this function. What other point can I look at? Well, if I do a slope here, it's not here, it's not here, it's not here. Oh, there's another point somewhere here. Okay, so you see those different points I'm going to find on the curve are what we call C. So you might have one point, you might have two points, you might have three, you might have multiple. But the mean value theorem clearly says that the value of that slope, okay, that you're gonna get is the same as the value of the slope you'll get for this secant line. And let me show you what the theorem clearly says. It means, it says, differentiate this function, okay? When you differentiate this function, the slope you're gonna get at that point, what point? Well, there's a point C, we don't know the point, okay? But it's gonna be F prime of C, because we're gonna be using C, but we don't know what that value is. But that's what you get after differentiating the function and plugging in that number. Remember that number C has to be between this point and this point. You can't start working outside. So it has to be within the interval, okay? It's gonna be equal to the slope of this secant. How do you calculate slope here? You know, from a straight line graph, y2 minus y1. So this is gonna be 
the value of f a so this is going to be f of a and this is going to be f of b and this is going to be b and this is going to be a so by the time because you're going from here to here so your slope is going to be so this is a negative slope is going to because this is lower than this so it's going to be f of b minus f of a divided by the di distance from here to here that's going to be b minus a so basically that's what you're talking about find the slope as if it's a straight line and then it's going to be equal to the slope at a point we just don't know what that point is now before we go on with all of these there's some conditions that we have to understand and the function has to meet the good thing about this example is it's a polynomial and polynomials generally all polynomials have domain from negative infinity to positive infinity so you don't really need to worry about whether these conditions will be satisfied or not the first condition is the function you're dealing with has to be continuous now when you say continuous you can see this is continuous there is no break from here to here you can't say there's a point where we have a vertical asymptote or you have no there are no spaces there are no gaps everything is continuous that's the first condition so conditions So the first condition is that f of x is continuous on the interval that we're given, okay? So a, b. In this case, our a, b is negative 2 and 2. And the second condition is that within that interval, f of x is still differentiable. So you don't have a weird function like absolute value of x. You can't differentiate it over an interval if you're going to have the sharp corner within the interval okay so we just don't do absolute value of x for differentiation so f of x is differentiable okay that's the second thing on the interval a b okay so those are the two conditions that you have now what's very important is that you know what f of b is so right now our b is 2 our a is negative 2 and you just need to plug in these two numbers here and then you get f of b f of a we're looking for c if there exists a c because that's what the theorem clearly says that there must be a c there must be a point between here and here where the slope of the tangent will be the same thing as the slope of the secant find that point well you can't know that point yet let's first find the slope of this and then we start looking for the slope that looks like it okay now let's do it the first thing is to state your function f of x is equal to x cubed minus 3x plus 2 okay the next thing is to talk about the conditions does it satisfy the condition okay conditions so number one you say f of x is continuous okay I'm going to abbreviate continuous um, on the interval that you're given negative 2 2 okay and the reason you, it is continuous it's because it's a polynomial because f of x is a polynomial so you can do the same thing and say the second condition is that f of x is differentiable okay be on the same interval negative 2 2 why because f of x is a polynomial so these are things you already know that all rational functions all polynomial functions are continuous and differentiable everywhere okay now having stated these two facts the next thing to do is to calculate um, the things you will need for this expression. The first thing is let's differentiate the function itself. So we say that f of x, f prime of x, if we differentiate this function, we're going to get 3x squared minus 3. That's what we get. So which simply tells us that f prime of c that we're looking for, f prime of c is going to be equal to, you just replace x with c. So you have this is going to be 3 c squared 
minus 3. That's f prime of c. Okay, now let's find the slope of the secant, which is this. So we're going to say f of b will be equal to, we plug in b because in this case, or well, we have to clearly state that our a here, uh, the interval we have is negative 2, 2. So our b is 2 and a is negative 2. So we have um, um, 2 cubed minus 3 into 2 plus 2. That's going to give us a 4. And then you have f of a will be equal to negative 2 cubed minus 3 times negative 2 plus 2. And that's going to give us a 0. So let's write this out. So what we have is that f prime of c will be equal to, let's find that. So we have um, f prime of c will be equal to 4 minus 0. Remember, 4 minus 0 divided by 2 minus negative 2. Because this is our b and this is our a. And that gives us 4 over 4, which is equal to 1. So right now, what is f prime of c? We already plugged in c here. So we can say, therefore, 3c squared minus 3 is equal to 1. And when you solve this, you will notice that, let's just solve it, you're going to see that 3c squared equals 4, which means c squared, c squared equals 4 over 3, and so we get c is plus or minus the square root of 4 over 3, and if you rationalize that, you're going to get c equals 2 root 3 over 3 plus or minus so you have two answers two numbers plus or minus once you get your answer you want to go back and say are these two numbers so the two numbers we got are c equals 2 root 3 over 3 and we also got negative 2 root 3 over 3 well I should flip the positions Let's put negative here and put positive here. So the question you want to ask yourself is, are these two numbers within this interval? The correct answer is yes. This number is greater than negative 2, and this number is less than 2. So it's within the boundaries. It confirms the mean value theorem that there is always at least one tangent on the curve within the interval that has the same slope as the average gradient or the average slope which is the slope of the secant line which I showed you in the curve okay so that's what the mean value theorem is about I hope this was helpful just remember to treat the function as if it's a straight line take the usual slope y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 take that as your slope of the secant, then go back and do your calculus, differentiate the function, and then just plug in C to replace X in the slope function, and then try to solve based on what you've done for the C. You might get 1C or 2C or 3Cs depending on what the function is. Remember to like this video, remember to share it, remember to leave a comment in the comment section, and I'll see you in the next video. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have simply stopped living. Bye-bye.